what do you think of this uh, this deal obviously has been slightly revised there is it uh, not such great news for Gloucester Coal now We've seen a few changes to the deal, uh, though Gloucester Coal is still recommending to shareholders that they still uh, accept the deal from Yang Coal. Uh, Gloucester Coal, of course, operates in the New South Wales Gloucester Basin as well as in Queensland in the Bowen Basin. And after this merger with Yang Coal, it will make them the largest Australian coal producer. So a few changes to this deal now. The, share, the shareholders that receive slightly less cash, uh, $3.15 a share, down from three twenty originally. Uh, Gloucester Coal ownership of the merged country Company will also be smaller by 1%. Yang Coal uh, to control 78% of it, Gloucester 22%. And also Yang Coal now to contribute about $300 million less of debt to the deal, uh, down to about $2.4 billion now. Uh, so this proposal is still um, subject to approval by the Foreign Investment Review Board, uh, though Noble Group, the largest shareholder, um, has also uh, accepted the, the, the changes to the deal so far. So that is a good sign for Gloucester shareholders and the deal itself. Uh, we saw Gloucester Coal report uh, quite a disappointing result for the first half. Um, just recently in earnings season, we saw um, profits fall down around $37 million. We did see some transaction costs and some one-off uh, non-cash accounting items there. But definitely some weakness in the metallurgical coal price in particular affected results there as well as some production. Uh, but Gloucester Coal was very cautious on outlook for two 2012 um, EBITDA guidance is around 45 to 55 million dollars for the year but so far today uh, the, the market so pretty much shrugged off this um, announcement from the company. Just wanted to ask you about all the other activity in the coal space. Uh, we've also seen Glencore and Extrata uh, looking to merge to, to create this, uh, this giant. Uh, what, what else is uh, driving all this M&A activity in the, the coal sector? Well, definitely the, the demand for energy. I mean, energy is always going to be in, in demand and it's going to only increase in demand going forward, not forward uh, particularly from the likes of China, uh, India and the Asia region. Uh, we have seen quite a lot of action in M&A activity in the coal space. We've seen MacArthur Coal and Peabody. Uh, New Hope Coal has just recently uh, stopped their uh, their auction process after five months after not uh, after no deal was reached and of course Gloucester and Yang Coal announced in December uh, so this pretty much leaves uh, few independent coal assets in Australia. Whitehaven Coal, one of the only large operating independent coal uh, projects in Australia now. Uh, Whitehaven Coal, definite takeover target. It recently put itself up, to say, uh, up for sale. So there's likely to be a little bit more um, activity in mergers and acquisitions. But as mentioned, there's not all that many independent players left. A lot of the big miners, BHP, Rio, already control a lot of the coal production in Australia. Um, coal stocks in particular, they've underperformed over the last year or so. We've seen in Gloucester uh, lose about 30% and Whitehaven coal down around 20% over the last year which uh, in that period the ASX 200 only lost around 13%. Uh, New Hope coal that was an outperformer mainly because of putting itself up for sale uh, up for auction last October over the period but even over the last quarter we've seen some underperformance in coal stocks and in recent results uh, as I mentioned Gloucester coal pretty disappointing also in BHP and Rio their coal uh, sectors in those companies uh, BHP uh, earnings increased but didn't quite reach expectations. Rio's coal production was a little bit more disappointing. Uh, so looking forward, coal uh, definitely in demand, energy in demand for mergers and acquisitions.